Hey, what's up guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide. Uh, today we're talking about Nintendo, the Nintendo Wii specifically. It's such a great and underrated system in my opinion. Now, recently the Nintendo Switch has been getting a lot of ports from that era of console. Mario's 25th anniversary happened, and with it, we got ports of Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2, along with The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which was just announced for the Switch. Now, these, again, are Wii games. They're not Switch games, they're just recently being ported to the Switch. So I figured I'd dust off my Nintendo Wii that I still have in the closet, and uh, do some modifications to it to get it running, because there's a lot of games from that, that console that I never actually got around to playing, because that was also the time that I had an Xbox 360 and PS3. The problem, though, is that the Wii is designed to work with these older CRT TVs that use composite input, and quite frankly, on a modern 4K TV, that's going to look like straight ass. So we have to make some changes to it. But I figured if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get the Wii running uh, in 2022 and be somewhat playable, there's some objectives that I want to hit. Number one is I want to mod the system to be able to play digital backup copies of my games, so I can load them all on a hard drive or an SSD. And the next upgrade that I want to do is I want to upgrade the video output to HDMI. Lastly, I want to expand the storage with an external hard drive so I can fit a ton of games on there. Now, these are the cables that the Wii originally came with. They're, they're crap, so we're going to toss those away. And we're going to use this adapter that I bought. It is a Portaholic 1080p HDMI Wii converter. These are cheap. I got mine on Amazon for 10 bucks, as you can see here. Oh, man, I didn't even know they made this in black. I would have bought the black one to match my console. Oh, well. So I'm told this Hyperkin uh, HDMI converter is actually much better. It's a little bit more pricey at $22, but um, I, I hear that it's worth it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pick one of those up. But for right now, this works. So as you can see, it plugs into the back of the Wii. I think this will fit a GameCube and then also a, um, a Super Nintendo as well. And it just converts that analog output to digital. Now, next, we're going to worry about the storage. So for that, I got a Sabrent 2.5-inch uh, hard drive enclosure. And I got this on Amazon as well. It's only 10 bucks, so again, not very pricey. As you can see, the top slides open here, and I just have a 2.5-inch mechanical drive in there. The Wii doesn't really have the throughput to support the speeds of an SSD, so there's really no point in putting one in there. Guys, now we're going to get into modding your Wii, and I'm not going to... I'm not gonna go step by step here but I will include links to all of these steps in the description below so number one is you need to install the homebrew channel on your Wii there is a link in the description below that tells you exactly how to do that in nine minutes number two is we're gonna install the Wii flow app from the homebrew browser which again is gonna be in the link in the description below to walk you through that step by step number three we're gonna download and configure the CIOS this is a critical component and again look in the link in the description below it'll tell you how to do that and the last step here is we're going to install the InKit 1.4 application and all of its Wii partitions. And then you also have to find the Wii ROMs or backups. I'm not going to tell you exactly where to look, but I would recommend that you start with Reddit if you have a Reddit account. Now, I want to circle back to step number three because I said that is the most critical component here because nothing will work if this is not set up correctly. So in the video below, when you get to this part where you see this screen, uh, the YouTuber recommends Beta 53. Don't do that. That will not work. So on the right, these are the steps you need to follow. Take a picture of this from top to bottom. You need to install 249, 250, and 251. And make sure you use Beta 52, not Beta 53, and that you install all three of these. Not just the two that he recommends in his video. That'll save you a lot of headache. Now, next we're going to learn how to convert the ROMs to ISOs, because when you first download these, they're downloaded um, very compressed and in a format that the Nintendo Wii can't read. Um, the ones I got were compressed to a file format called GCZ. It's some weird format I've never heard of. They do that to save space because ISOs are huge, so they heavily compress them by removing a lot of the data. But your Nintendo Wii, like I said, can't read it that way. So. This is where the end kit comes in. So you're going to launch the end kit application here, and then you're going to grab your downloaded ROM and you're going to drag it over and you're going to tell it to recover this to an ISO state. And then you're going to select the output folder. So where do you want to spit out the ISO once it's done converting it 
to an ISO. So in my case, I have a temp folder set up for Wii conversions here. And you'll go ahead and switch that over. And I'm, I'm speeding this up for the sake of time here, but it's gonna convert that unreadable file format into a disk image or ISO that the Wii can recognize. So once that's done, you'll go to the output folder that you designated earlier and you'll see that you now have an ISO file. So you have a usable file and you will just take this file and now you can just throw it on your external hard drive and the Wii will be able to read it. So next you'll want to go to the hard drive that you have for your Wii. Uh, this is mine, it's almost completely full. You can see I have it formatted to NTFS, which the Wii will read if it's an external hard drive. It will not read an SD card formatted that way. So you're going to want to create a folder in your Wii hard drive called WBFS. It is important that you do that, otherwise the Wii, Wii Flow application will not be able to read them. You can see all of my ISO games here that I have um, files for. So, guys, once you move everything over to the external uh, Wii hard drive, just plug it into the back uh, port of your Nintendo Wii and power it up, and it should now be able to read it through the Wii Flow application. Now, if you have an HDMI converter like I do, you'll just want to make sure that you go into the settings um, under the screen section here and TV resolution, and make sure you tell it you're on an HD TV. Otherwise, the screen will flicker in discolor and it'll be pretty much unusable. So once you've done that, you'll see the homebrew channel that we installed earlier. You'll click on that and then go ahead and launch it. And inside of this channel will be where you will launch the Wii Flow application. So you can see Wii Flow at the top there along with the, the other applications uh, in the steps that I provided earlier. Just click on load to launch Wii Flow. It does take a couple seconds to load up. And now that it's loading up, you'll see all of the games that you have on your hard drive should now be viewable and playable here. Now, I've already set this up. Normally it doesn't have all the cover art. You have to download that through the app. But you just click on the settings icon and then tell it to download the cover art. It'll do it automatically. Super simple. And you can see I have, again, I have a little over 100 games on here. It's about 500 gigs worth of games. And... Now, it's important that every time you load a new game onto your Wii, you have to click on the Home button on the Wii Mote while you're in here, and then you'll want to click on Reload Cache. If you don't do that, then you won't, you won't see the new games that you add to your hard drive. So every time you add new games to the hard drive, you need to do that. Also, click on the Settings icon. Make sure that it, the game partition is set to the USB so it reads from the hard drive, because by default, it's set to the SD card. So you can see, again, I've, I've got a ton of great games on here. If you think about it, these games when they came out were $49.99 a pop. So at over 100 games, it's almost $5,000 worth of, of games that are now on here and playable whenever I want to play them. I'm just going to load one up here so you can see how quickly it loads and how fluently it runs. It is literally perfect. And I can't, I can't stress enough how great this is to have all of these games accessible on a single hard drive. We're going to jump into this one. This specific game is incredibly co like expensive to find a physical copy of. If you try to buy this particular game on eBay, it's easily 100 bucks, if not more. I'm just going to jump into the arcade mode here. I gotta go with my boy Ryu. I literally, I, I can't not play him in every Capcom game. Mostly just because he's probably the only one I actually know the moves for. And you can see it's running at a silky smooth 60 frames a second. Now, the HDMI adapter will not... It, this isn't... Obviously, this is not a true 1080p image. It's upscaled. The Wii is only capable of a maximum of 40p. So this is upscaled. 
it's not going to look amazing on a 4K TV especially, which is what I have. On a 1080p TV, I imagine it would look a lot better because it's a lower resolution, but it still looks more than more than decent, especially in 2021. I was surprised by how 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 playable this is because it is you know a system that was released in what 2006, I believe. So, anyways, uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks for taking a look at this. I hope it helped, and if you try to you know give this a shot, uh, let me know how it turned out. Thanks.